Cindy Runge is an experienced family law attorney focused on divorce litigation, mediation, and collaborative law. She has experience working with victims of abuse as well as state intervention cases. And Cindy is also the co-facilitator for the Family Law Consortium. So uh, Cindy, you can take it from here. I welcome everybody and just wanted to um, welcome you to the first part of, um, we have two webinars about divorce and today's is about domestic violence and um, financial safety, domestic abuse and financial safety. So a little bit about the Family Law Consortium. So we're a group and we um, exist within USA 500, we're a round table. And our uh, mission is to collaborate with highly skilled family law professionals or different disciplines and to educate each other with a focus on further strengthening and deepening our connections. We strive to leverage our relationships and develop robust cross referrals within our family law roundtable and with other USA 500 members. Uh, so our group is very uh, dedicated to um, family law issues, working with people who are, work in the family law space. And we're, our hope is that this practicum is going to provide you with information that you need to know now um, because of COVID-19. So specifically, the first section is going to have to do with safety first, domestic violence, um, and how it's on the rise um, during COVID-19. And then we're going to transition the panel over to Karen Levitt, Rich Walner, and Janice Berner, who are going to discuss financial safety. So, so of course, we have to apologize because we're doing we're we're giving you this presentation at a very high level, um, so we can't get into a lot of the detail. But just overall, going back to that slide previously, the four uh, matters you know that are considered an emergency. I'm going to talk about emergency motions for temporary orders. So sometimes you have a case where um, you have a party who is in fear um, of the other party, but you may not have enough evidence to meet the very high standard that you would re be required for an abuse prevention order. That doesn't mean that, um, that you don't have a good case. It just may mean that you have to um, take the next step, would, which would be to file a complaint in the probate and family court and try to obtain um, emergency motion for temporary orders. So, um, in that case as well, it's really important that the client provide you with a lot of detail. So I always ask people to write me a narrative because usually when they're talking to you, they're very upset. They don't um, always remember to give you the detail, but somehow when they write it down, there seems to be a lot more information that you can get so you can help them with their affidavit. Um, and so, you know, if it's a divorce situation, then you're going to be filing a complaint for divorce. You're going to be um, e-filing all of these things and every court has a very um, a slightly different procedure the rules um, you know for the pandemic are changing fairly regularly and so you have to go to a website we can provide you with that information following the webinar so that you you know where to send everything where things are going to be e-filed and um, and then the court will get back to you um, as to whether or not you know you've met that standard I also want to briefly touch on contempts. And so a contempt occurs when, if you've already got an order from the court and um, someone has not, the other party hasn't complied with it, um, there may be certain situations where you're going to need to um, file an emergency motion to deal with a contempt issue. Now, if it's something like, um, you know, one, you know, misparenting time or um, a late child support payment, it, you know, the court probably won't consider that an emergency, but um, you, you know, definitely want to check in with an attorney um, if there's a pattern going on. Um, but basically, um, during the pandemic, you're still, I, I want to like go to the next slide if we could actually. And the one after that. Right. So, I mean, you're still going to have to follow um, court procedures. And so if, for, for example, if you're going to be filing a contempt, you have to file the complaint and you have to get the summons and complaints served on the other side. Um, some document production is still going to continue on with some of your cases. Um, and but protocols are going to vary from county to county. So you want to be familiar with the county that you're practicing in. There are procedures in place to help protect domestic abuse victims, um, such as impounding addresses. And um, if we could go to the next slide. 
Um, these next, I think, two slides were provided to me by Laverne Gordon from Love Life Now Foundation. And um, she um, helps victims of domestic abuse. Her organization does. She's a fantastic speaker, very engaging. She um, provided these um, tips. And I just want to hit some of them at a very high level here. But um, knowing your abuser's red flags, um, being ready to leave at a moment's notice. She talked about you know, making sure that your, your car is facing, you know, the exit, so like in a driveway, um, making and memorizing a list of emergency contacts. Um, because, um, you know, in some, prior to the pandemic, people might have the opportunity to make a phone call um, when their abuser isn't there. But now, you know, there's a lot of less opportunity for that because some people are like, we're, they're still living with their abuser or they're in the house all the time. Um, so if we could go to the next slide as well. Just wanted to point out um, that there are domestic violence uh, agencies and shelters that are available. We can provide this information to you following the webinar. SafeLink is operated by Casamirna's DV agency. And just, I'm being very mindful of my time. I'm gonna move on to the last slide for our section. Um, and just, um, but the important thing to know when you're dealing with emergencies and folks who need um, emergency service in a family law matter, is you need to know what resources are available. Depending on uh, the relationship between the parties, there may be other options available to them. 